This episode is sponsored by Fire and Fuel Coaching, where I help you discover who you are and where you want to go, both on and off the job. For more information, please reach out to me at my Instagram handle at Jerry Fire and Fuel. Welcome to today's episode of Enduring the Badge Podcast. I'm your host, Jerry Dean Lund. And if you haven't already done so, please take out your phone and hit that subscribe button. I don't want you to miss an upcoming episode. And hey, while your phone's out, please give us a rating and review on whichever platform you listen to this podcast on, such as iTunes, Apple Podcasts, and Spotify. It helps this podcast grow. And the reason why, when this gets positive ratings and reviews, those platforms like Apple Podcasts and Spotify show this to other people that never listened to this podcast before. And that allows our podcast to grow and make a more of an impact in other people's lives. So if you would do that, I would appreciate that from the bottom of my heart. My very special guest today is Stephen Leapley. How are you doing, Stephen? I'm good. How are you doing, Jerry? Good. Thank you. Stephen, can you introduce yourself to the audience and just give like a little bit of background about who you are? <laughs> sure. Um, I Well, that would be too too easy. Yeah. <laughs> I don't like to talk about myself. Uh, I'm, 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 I'm a humble guy. No, I was um, I, uh, originally from the Midwest. I grew up in the Midwest and then, and then joined the military, spent 10 years in the Navy as a corpsman. And uh, ended up in San Diego, where I met my wife, and and never left. Basically, <laughs> once I, once I found her and the beautiful weather, it's so much better weather out here than it is in Chicago. And um, and I did uh, I did sixteen years past military with um, as a paramedic, and so I was paramedic and uh, I worked for the government for a couple of uh, private ambulance companies out here, some consulting businesses that I had in, in the medical field. And then through a series of events, um, ended up falling into being a ghost writer. And uh, in that in that journey of of started off as a copywriter doing some copywriting, and then that journey of of kind of figuring out where my niche was and where I wanted to to land, I kept landing on like three different things. And I'm like, I gotta like you know that that struggle between do you niche <laughs> or do you, you know like you can't serve everybody. You know if you try to serve everybody, you serve nobody. Yeah, kind of thing. And so. And looking at that and, and just, I found, I found a little sweet spot of all three of my, of my areas that I work with, which is in the entrepreneurial world, uh, being a former EMS field and then military, and specifically in the medical field and the military, I kind of fallen into like, just kind of grouped all three of those together. And so now my focus is, is really helping military vets and EMS professionals um, kind of just tell their story and help get their story out there. Yeah. I mean, I believe everybody has a story. Um, you, you talk to a lot of people and they'll, they'll tell you they don't have a story, but I don't really believe that because once you start digging into their life, there there's a story to, to be told. And why, why is it for you that like, like, why does that excite you to like help someone tell their story? Um, I think one is, I love books. So I've been an avid reader for a while. So I, I, I love reading books. I love the whole storytelling process. I think deep down inside, I have a secret um, desire to be a stand up comedian, which is really telling funny stories. <laughs> so, um, but I haven't got over my fear to stand up in front of a bunch of people who might not laugh at my jokes. <laughs> so, uh, um, but I, I, there's a, there's just an element of like, I look back over my career in the medical field and, I mean, oh my gosh, there's so many stories I could tell. And, and like some of them are are you know, professional stories, you know, different kind of accidents you've seen and, you know, and incidents you've been involved with. Some of them are funny stories. Some of them are just inappropriate stories, right? Like we all have, we all have stories and, um, and, 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 and it all kind of like ties us in. It's like, there's a, there's only a few industries, EMS, you know, field being one of them. And I, for me, that's fire, police, ambulances, you know, all that. I, I group all that together. Mm -hmm. um, you know, th that the EMS field and the, and the military, like those are two groups of people that if you work any time in, it's like you become your own family because you spend a lot of time with right, them and, right. and they know you and you get to know them. You, that trust builds up and, and, you know, you and I could work together for, for, you know, five years and never see each other again for, 20 years and pick right up where we started off or we left off at, you know, 20 years ago. And I think, I think it says a lot about the type of, the type of industry it is and a lot, and it, and it says a lot about the the caliber of people who, who 
spend their careers in that in that industry. Yeah. And, um, you know, and when we look back, I, I talk to a lot of people and I've got, you know, as a, as a ghostwriter, I've done, I've done books for people who, who have their story and they use it for their business. You know, like I'm currently right now, I'm helping a doctor write her story and just her, tra- you know, and now she's a transformation. She's a doctor, but she's also like a transformational wellness coach. So she kind of uses both of those. And so her story of overcoming her past, she's writing that to use that into her, into her business. I've had people who have written their stories and um, this got me, this, this is kind of where I really fell into it was, was um, I was helping a, a buddy of mine who's prior SEAL, Navy SEAL and, and a fire medic um, tell his story. And he was like, this has done more for my PTSD than therapy ever did. You yeah. know, and that, and that whole like catharsism, catharticism, catharticness. There we go. Huh? Better. <laughs> Um, I, I write better than I speak. <laughs> um, that's why I write. There's a um, there's there's something that happens when we write our stories out. Like if if you're a journaler and you journal, you feel better. Right? You you might still be angry, but if you can journal out your anger, you you feel lighter. And um and when he said that to me, that really hit me. Like like yeah, there's a there's a place for telling in our stories. Um, I've had people who just want to tell stories and. I've got a guy who's writing a story. He wants to write, make 10 copies of his book and send it to his 10 grandkids. That's, that's all he wants to do. And, you know, and so it's like, like just the legacy that we leave, you know, behind is, is, is incredible. And, and yeah, we can tell stories and, and, and that's, a, that's one of the beautiful things about podcasts is, you know, we have it, we put it up, put it up and you can go back and you can see it and, and, and hear it. And, and, then, and alongside of that, I think there's also something really really like tangible about having a book. You're like, ah, oh, this is like this is my my great grandpa's story. Right. You know, because once they're once they're gone, you know, I found out yeah. I was a I was a military medic. And I found out after my grandfather died that he was an army medic at D Day. Oh, wow. And I never knew that when he was when he was alive. And I was like, man, had I known that, like I would have I would have just like asked him tons of questions. And and there was probably some stories there that, that that could have been told. Um, and, um, and I was like, Oh, what a, what a missed opportunity. And so I really like, I had a fire to not have people miss opportunities. Yeah. I know one of your posts, um, I was reading it saying, talking about every first responder should write a book. Yeah. Yeah. I, I agree. Like we, we all have stories. We all, you know, like if, if you spent any amount of time, as a first responder, like you're going to have, story. um, you know, like my first, my first EMS EMT story, it's cr- crazy story. Like something you don't, you don't see every day, you know, and, and like, like that's a story in and of itself. And so there's, there's all these, like every time you go on shift, you're, you know, there's, there's a new story, right? <laughs> whether it's true or not, there is a new story. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. That's very true. <laughs> You're right. Just the, the culture of the first responder world and, uh, you know, tell one person, tell another person, tell another person. Right. And then that's a whole form of a different version of, of storytelling than, than we're talking about here, but still it's, it's telling a story. You know, so I have, I have this, I have this hidden like desire to make like a chicken soup of the soul type of book in with both military and, and first responders. Like there's, you know, and, and I've gone back and forth, you know, whether that's like, is that a book that, that is for first responders by first responders, or is it a book by first responders for everyone else to kind mm-hmm. of, you know, learn a little bit and get a glimpse into the life of, of what it, what it takes. Um, you know, there's, cause there's so, there's so much that goes into jobs, right. And when we're, when we're, when we're on shift or running a call, whatever it is, like, like there's so much that goes into that. And it's so it can easily be, well, it, I mean, I feel like every call is its own story in, in, in sure. some way, shape or some, yeah. some fashion um, it is, but then there's, there's a bigger piece of it that is, that just, I think it expands from where, from where we start and, and, and those kind of stories need to be told. 
Yeah. I mean, and to kind of go back a little bit, like the reason I think it feels so good to sometimes to tell those stories is like you say, just to get it out of your system, kind of like the the journaling and just to like, there's just something about putting something down to, you know, to paper and or typing something out that is just, I feel is very good for you. Yeah. It's, you know, it's, it's different than, than like sitting in a, you know, across the room from a therapist and you have somebody like, so how does that feel when the girl fell down the well and you couldn't get her out with a fish hook and you had to like break your arm? Like it felt like crap. But like, if you're, if you're telling a story, like then like those emotions come up, it, it, you're not, you're not, you're not telling it because you like, you have to, you know, I feel like when you, when you, when you sit down with a, with a counselor or a therapist, even if it's on your own accord, like there's, there's an element of, I have to say this versus when you write it out, you get to yeah. come from a completely different mindset. And so your thought process about the situation isn't your guard is let down, your your memory almost begins to come back a little bit more because you're you're it becomes more visceral and you're and you can feel that, especially if it's like if you're if you're writing a story about a like a like a tragic call or something, like 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 you can go back, like I I can go back and and physically feel the emotions I felt when I've had some of my more tragic calls that I've dealt with. Yeah. Yeah. It Like there's just an element of reliving those stories that I think people want to forget. Do you find that like they don't really like block them out or don't. I, I, I For me, I almost feel like it's, it's, it's misplaced. Um, I don't say misplaced trauma, but I, I think, I think it, when we don't, when we don't share some of those things, I f- I, can, I almost feel like it, we, we keep it misplaced. So it's, it's still in our brains as this, this is the trauma that I dealt with when I was a paramedic or a, you know, or a firefighter or, or a police officer. Like these are all the, it's all the crap that I had to go through. Um, you know, and then you go over here to, to a counselor and you're like, Oh, I got to talk about this stuff again. But then you're like, actually, like when I was going through that, you know, you start writing, you're like, when I was going through that event, like, wow, like I remember I was, I came into that thing mad because I was eating a cheeseburger and I couldn't finish my cheeseburger. And it was the first cheeseburger I had in a month. And it was, you know, a double cheeseburger from, (laughs) from, you know, fat burger. And I just, and you're, and you're like, you know, so, so it, it almost allows for a wider, broader look into um, into what the story is. So it almost it almost be, takes on a different a different feeling and a different meaning. So it's not so much um, factually practical. It's more it's more um, just storytelling. Yeah, if that makes I, sense. Yeah, I've been. Uh working on a, a book myself and I find it, oh man, it is not as easy as I thought it would be. I didn't think it was going to be easy, but I guess I should say it's a lot more difficult than I thought it would be. I don't consider myself a very well, you know, writer. Like I, when I write things, it takes me a very long time to write things like um, just some of my like learning disabilities and stuff like that just takes a long time to like write something. And I'm like, and it's, mm. it's almost painful in a way, <laughs> but it's therapeutic in a way to like, like you said, to, to, to get it out there. And, you know, yeah. by doing that, I'm still like, I'm still working on myself. I always just believe like constantly want to work on myself to be better. And the more I, the more I write, right. The better my grammar gets, the, the more I can see like, oh, that should be said that way, you know, and it start to like, to learn, try to, to get in, in that rhythm. But how do you, how do you like as a ghostwriter get into maybe the character of the person that's writing? Mm. I've actually been called the Jim Carrey of ghostwriting. Somebody <laughs> called me that <laughs> uh, because just because I, that that's what I do. Like that, it's it's a gift for me, for me. I, I feel like it's a gift of just being able to get inside somebody's head um, and like and pull that out. I think part of that is just you know the the years I spent 
you know, rolling up on a call, like, you know, like you roll up on an accident scene or, or any kind of incident, like you have 30 seconds, you know, or less to, to make a judgment call on what's mm-hmm. going on. And, um, and so I think, I think f- especially in, as, as first responders, like we get really good at learning, um, learning character. We get really good at, at making judgment calls, not in like a, as an authoritative power thing, mm-hmm. but, but, um, as a, um, as, as an, as an instructive, intuitive, like, ah, this is what's going on here. Right. Right. And I think, you know, so for me, I have that. And then I have an advanced degree in psych, in counseling psychology. Um, so, cause that's where I was going to go. And that's, you know, and that, you know, that's the, tell me how you feel. <laughs> and like, I, like I'm done with that stuff. Um, you know, so, but, but taking both of those really comes down to just asking the right questions. You know, the more questions that you ask, the easier it is to, to figure out what needs to be said. Right. And so, right. And so that's that I've, I've kind of learned how to ask the right questions, you know, how, how many questions to ask. And, and sometimes there's a ton of questions and sometimes there's not as many questions. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's really cool because you know once you start asking the questions and then then there's there becomes a safe place to answer and then you can break down like you know how did how did you feel about that uh, I felt bad you know like you know versus yeah you know, I felt really horrible like I I felt inadequate to 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 handle this mm. you know but I learned like over time to not take it personal or or to realize that you know. I can do what I can do and I'm not necessarily, I don't necessarily hold the complete reins for the outcome. You know, like if you show up on yeah. a, on an accident scene, you've got somebody who's bleeding out, you know, there's, and you're like, I'm going to do CPR and try to, and try to save them. Like you can only do so much. If, if they've bled out five liters of blood, no amount of CPR is going to, is going to bring that person back. And so you're like, you sure. can't, you can't hold on to that. And And I think, I think sometimes we do, we try to hold on to, to, to much more than we can. And, um, and I think there's a great correlation between, you know, t- telling those stories, even if you tell it to like, you know, to the civilian person, you know, I don't understand, you know, you know accident scenes and, but, but you can, but you can get in there and you can be like, well, you know, I felt inadequate. Like, so, you know, but then you pull it over here and you're like, how often do we feel inadequate in our daily life? You know, how often does sometimes as a mom feel inadequate about the meal that she's making for her family because she forgot to go grocery shopping and she only has so much food, you know, and it's raining and, you know, and the husband's got the car. So she, you know, like, you know, so there's it, that ability to transfer those emotions. And I think that's what, one of the things that books do really well is help transfer those emotions. Um, I got, I picked up my niche and being able to do that when, when my wife and I were both in grad school she would hand me, she would have me edit her papers. And so, um, cause I was already, that's what I was already doing was editing and, and copywriting. So it just, yeah. it was easy for me, <laughs> excuse me. And, um, and it was one time she came and she had a, had a, she was supposed to have a 10 page paper to write. And it was, and she had written four pages. I was like, you need, you need more pages. She's like, I'm done. I'm like, I'm like, you, you can't, I, I know this professor, you need to write 10 pages. She's like, I don't want 10 pages. I wrote what I wrote, I'm done. She's like, if you want to write more, write it. She says, just edit it for me. I'm like, you, I'm like, I cannot let you turn this in. And so she's like, well, if you want, if you think it needs to be 10 pages, then you write those 10 pages. And I was like, challenge accepted. <laughs> so, um, but I couldn't write it in my tone. Yeah. You know, because, because she's different than you mean, She's, she writes like she speaks and I write very academically and very like, you know, professional and, and, and stuff. And she, he just tells it like it is. And so I had to get in there and write it as if I were her so that it would flow. Um, and that's where I really learned how to do that was just, it was a little bit easier, obviously, because she's my wife. Um, but still like, like there's, it really like, like, oh, this is kind of cool. And then I just took it on as a challenge to, 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 to embody the personality of the person that I'm writing for. And so, um, to really just kind of figure out who they are. And, and, and so, so having a psychology background, like that's like fun yes. for me. <laughs> yeah. It's, it sounds like almost like just you're like 
playing a role in a, in a movie, right? Like you're being, yeah. like you take on that character, like you studied the, studied that character inside and out and you're taking on that, that role instead of like acting it out in a film, but writing it down in, in a book. That's exactly the conversation I had with someone um, when I was sitting down with her a, couple, a few years ago. She's like, I don't understand what a ghostwriter does. She was like, you get paid to write a book, but you don't get your name anywhere on it. She was like, really, you know, like, yeah, in yeah, that, like yeah. where was the accolades come from? And uh, and I was like, I was like, well, I'm like, I'm like I get my accolades because I usually, you know, get noted as the editor of the book. So that that always makes me feel good. Um, but um. But I said, I mean, Holly, you're an actress. Like, you get paid to learn a part, to in, invest in that piece and play a role, and then you're out and you're done. You know, and you might have a small role, and you might your name might be there, or might not be there. Right? And she's yeah. like, Well, that's true. I'm like, it's kind of like ghostwriting. Yeah, yeah, definitely. She's like, oh, yeah. I could... And it probably does it take you some time to like get in into that role we'll call it the role like you know like into that person's character we'll call it that um sometimes it does it, it not very often though because there's i think just with with my experience and the and the years of experience that i have is it's really easy for me and i don't i don't typically pick up um i don't get too many clients where i don't or i can't relate to mm. and so that's that's the that's the other the other nice caveat for me is is I can relate to a lot of, of, of the elements that somebody has been exposed to or, or, you know, especially like in the EMS field, like it's, I'm probably further away from, from, you know, from a police officer uh, just because I, I haven't had that, ex at, that experience, but I've, I have, I have enough exposure and talked to enough, you know, and enough cops that like, it would be pretty easy for me to jump into the role. Um, and the things that I don't, know if they're related to something that I do, like if it was a police officer, I, I I would totally jump on that versus, you know, if somebody said, well, I want you to write my story and I'm, and I'm a, I'm a rocket scientist, you know, I'm not your guy. <laughs> like, you know, you, you couldn't pay me enough to write an engineer's book. <laughs> <laughs> Stay, staying in your, staying in your own lane there, huh? <laughs> yeah yeah like i i know what i'm good at and so that's where i focus at and so that that helps keep me better what advice do you, would you have for somebody that's listening that's like well maybe i do want to write a book like like just maybe playing with that that thought um i would say start journaling if you if you have it if you have like if you have ideas just just sit down, grab a grab a spiral notebook, and just start journaling thoughts and notes and ideas about about your life or about you know if you if you if you think, man, I have a story in me somewhere. Just you know, start you know, like start writing. Like, what would I what would I write about? You know, who who would benefit? Why? What is my point? My purpose of of writing? When I meet with when I meet with clients, I always give them like a, I have a 21, 21 question initial like questionnaire that um which is like a 30,000 foot view of the book, you know, like in, and, and, and it just kind of walks like really like, so from way up here, is this even something that, that sounds like it, like it would work. And, um, and in most of the time it, it, it does. And there's, there's a lot of times too, that people will start that and they'll be like, oh, actually, you know what, this story makes a really good point that for this person to know, it's, it's almost like self-discovery. Yeah, um, I would imagine. <laughs> you know, as as you start, as you start writing, like ah, like oh, I do have, oh, I do have stories. Oh, I do have this and, and this, or I have this and that. And like ah, this would be ah, you know, it'd be so great if like this group of people knew about this. Um, you know, I mean, and it's it's there's so many facets of it, right? Like you could you could write you could write a book of of you know like of of stories to like the first year cadet, right? <laughs> like, yeah, like yeah. you know, cause they're so green. They have no idea what's coming their way. You know, they think they do, um, you know, and, and they, and they walk around like they, like they probably think, you know, think they know, but, but man, you know, your first year as a first responder, you, you're going to get rocked. 
um if you're if you're doing it any if you're if you're if you're in any you know area that has you know legitimate decent you know calls yeah. and, and such you're gonna you're gonna get um you know you're gonna get exposed to stuff it's like and you're gonna be like wow you know in, in a year in you're gonna be like man I, I i didn't know what i thought i knew you know and and um and so sometimes you know it's just it's just good to 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 get it out on paper and so that, that's usually the that's 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 a probably the best way to start or you can call me we can jump on a phone call and, and I'll walk you through it <laughs> And then you'll write it down for them, right? <laughs> and then I'll write it down for you. Yes. <laughs> like actually, to be specific, it's more yeah. it's more with than for. Yeah, so there you go. <laughs> I, 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 you know, because before before I began, I used to ghostwriting was like somebody would call you and be like, "I, I need a book on horses," and and then you would write a book on horses, and they would put their name on it. Um, you know, like that's what I thought ghostwriting was. Yeah, and I think probably initially that was there was I'm sure enough enough of those kind of of stories out there, but, right. um, but I, I, it's more for me, it's more like coaching almost. Yeah. Um, and it's just like my, my job, my job as a ghostwriter is to pull your stories out of your brain and put them coherently on paper. <laughs> yes. I'm finding out that is difficult to do. Um, it just, for me, for me, it just doesn't come out smoothly. And I'm like, am I really remembering all these facts, you know, correctly? And then I find that you got to go back in, right? Then it's because once you start writing, you're like, oh, yeah, like you said, you start kind of remembering things, you know, that you you may have forgotten. Yeah. Yeah. So it's it, it's it's kind of cool. I, have, I actually have a buddy who wrote a children's book. And I didn't know he, I, he's a he's a speaker. And I was like... You wrote a book. He goes, yeah. He goes, one night I was just sitting down writing my report and, and it just came to me like, I write a lot. It's like, I have so <laughs> much information about things that, that people should know about that, you know, if I could, if I could take half of my calls and teach it to people, they wouldn't get in trouble. They wouldn't do. And so he decided to just take some of his stories and, flip them and twist them and, and, and dumb them down into a book for nine to 11 year olds. Oh, wow. And um, that's really cool. So anybody yeah. can do it. What's your, I mean, what's your favorite type of writing to do? Mm, I, I like taking somebody's story and, and, and putting it to some kind of business aspect or leadership aspect um anything anything that you can take like a story and make practical applications with yeah is is really fun to do for one it's 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 one of the easier things for me to do um it's fun to do but personally like i learn so much more about myself when i when i write books for people as well if i get somebody who, who takes their story and wants to sh you know demonstrate a leadership characteristic out and i'm like oh I'm sure I could pull half of the stuff. And so I feel like I get, I feel like I, I get, I get paid to learn. <laughs> yeah. Just yeah. As, just as much as I get to do. Um, and so that's, that for me is, is I love that. Um, Cause it's just, it's, it's, it's fulfilling. It's soul filling. Yeah. I, I can understand that selfishly from, you know, doing the podcast for almost six years now, just being able to like pick people's brains about, you know, different aspects and it, and I get to learn and then, you know, and, and share that with my, with my audience, which is, it's, it's amazing. Yeah. See, you have, you probably have three or four different books in, in you just based <laughs> off of the podcast. Yeah. If, yeah, yeah. If I could get them out there, it would be great. <laughs> out, of, out of my head, free up some space, right? <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> Steven, like, you do other types of writing, right? You say you write articles and other things like that. Some. Yeah, I do. Um, I still, I still write blogs and articles uh, for people. Um there's I'll, I'll do, I'll do special, you know, like specialty one-off projects 
that 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 come up. Um, I, I like doing you know certain business projects. I just did a, a proposal for a guy who does a podcast for him to get corporate sponsorship in in a in a specific industry, and so that was really fun to like help him like just craft craft uh, proposals for you know so that he can pay for his podcast and and so, so you know I have things like that. I, I I'll do little ebooks here and there too, and and uh, I enjoy writing. So it's you know I'm always I, I, I fix my schedule so that, that I'm, I'm, I only bring on one new book writing client a month and, and my process, this is kind of, it's typically like a three month process, um, which, which pushes it for a lot of people, but I don't, I don't do the publishing, like, like talk about niching and stuff like, like I've realized I don't want to deal with publishing. I got people that I know. <laughs> um, and, uh, you know, and if it's a bigger project, sometimes I'll, we'll, you know, collaborate that way. But for me, it's like my, my specialty is delivering the written, a written book ready for you to go do, you know, for you to go do it. And, and doing that in a, in a kind of in a 90 day push just helps keep me going. So I'm, I'm always, I'm always writing a book. It's usually, it's like, you know, with, with that, I've got, you know, the first month, of in any given month i have the first month of someone who's more like we're breaking everything down and kind of formatting the book and then i have another person who i'm actually writing the book for and then i have another person that i'm doing editing and you know final kind of editing through so it's so that keeps me going and then um and then i have so it, it frees me up room room and space to do to do other projects and take on little things that, that are fun and and uh i have a couple of clients now that that's all i do is just write i write four blogs a month for her. And she's, she's happy. She's like, I don't have to do it. <laughs> I've been doing it for a couple of years now. She's like, I love it. <laughs> yeah. When you're an entrepreneur though, like you, you got to find the things that you're good at and, and kind of stick to those. And the ones that you're not good at, you got to look to someone else to fill those gaps. Yep. And yeah. And yeah, she's like, it's so worth, it's so worth worth it. Like, I don't, I don't have to stress over it. I don't, I just, I just look and go, wow, that's really good. <laughs> and, and, and then I post it. <laughs> do you do like, let's say, um, someone's getting into the the world of writing, like, you know, articles or something like that for magazines and stuff. And they want to start getting their, their stuff out there. Do you help them? Do you like coach them through the, like how to write better articles or how to write an article or do you do that type I of have. stuff as well? I don't, I, I do I I have done some of that in the past. I don't market that much that that piece a lot. Um, maybe I should actually, but but um, um, I I, ha, I have and and I enjoy that too. And but yeah, yeah there's there, there's tons of ways to just to kind of level up your writing and do it fairly quickly and and make you feel like you're you're actually learning something with with a without having to go you know go to school to learn how to write. <laughs> Yeah, I I couldn't even imagine going to school to learn how to write. To be honest, at this point in my life, <laughs> I, I looked, I looked, you know, some years back, I looked at looked at taking a a graduate course, um, going through a graduate degree in, in fine arts, which you know basically is writing, and um, and talking with people, they're like, unless you unless you want to be like a script writer or a novel writer, he's like, it's almost just worthless for you to do that. Like and um, they're like Steve. You know more about writing than what you're going to learn in this class. And I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> and and kind of looking at at everything that would be talked about, I'm like, yeah, I can I could do this myself. <laughs> yeah. So, and yeah, and so it's it's cool. And you know, I have yeah, we have my wife and I have a crap ton of kids, and so we've been a uh, we've been homeschooling for years, and so I I feel like I've been inundated in, in teaching English for the last 20 years. <laughs> well, that sounds like they have, they have a good instructor for them, a, a good teacher there. I've got two of them that want to be writers. So that's kind of, Oh, cool. wow. That, that, that says something about being a parent. Maybe, or maybe I'm just really crazy. I don't know. No, <laughs> <laughs> they, they're intrigued to, to follow in your footsteps there. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, I have one that wants to be a wants to be a firefighter, and uh, and once and two other ones that that want to do. One of them wants to be just a writer, and the other one wants to wants to he wants to be a professional surfer and a writer. 
Hey, hey, that, that sounds sounds great. Travel the world and surf and write. I mean, that, that doesn't sound like a bad gig. It's not, not at all. <laughs> Stephen, if, oh, if I knew how to surf, I would do that myself. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Stephen, how come people reach out to you if they're looking to 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 write a book or need some help? Um, you know, in right with their writing skills. Um, the I mean the the best way is I'm on social media platforms. So I'm on LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram. Um, I spend most of my time on LinkedIn. Um, in, and I think, I think a lot of, a lot of people in our profession and have, you know, do a little bit of both, but, but I know most of them, I know a lot of them are, do LinkedIn as well. Um, if anybody's interested, Like I have, I have a couple of eBooks, booking so that they've, you know, I know that they've watched or listened to this podcast, and then I'll send them out. I can, I'll send them out a, a, a little book on questions you should ask a ghostwriter, you know, before you hire them. And it really walks it, it walks through why you'd have somebody ghostwrite for you. But it also, there's, there's also a piece in there about why, why they should write their books. Um, Perfect. And I, I have a, I have an eBook. I have an ebook specifically towards that's geared towards veterans, but it's really close to to EMS, um, first responders, and so I'm kind of tweaking tweaking that right now for, for you know to be more specific towards towards the EMS field um, and the first responding field. So even if they put that in there as soon as that's done, which will probably be in the next week. Actually, by the time the podcast drops and you're listening yeah. to this, that ebook will be done. So if you just put badge in there. I'll shoot. I'll shoot people at two eBooks on a on why why you should hire a ghostwriter or questions you should ask a ghostwriter, and then an eBook on why every every EMS person should should write their story. And then the best space for them to reach out to you to to get those is on on LinkedIn. Is that correct? I'd say LinkedIn. Is, yeah, and if okay. you're not on LinkedIn, then Facebook because I'm there too. So. But typically, typically people have one or the other. At least. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Depending on what generation they're from. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> well, thank you so much for being on the podcast today and, and sharing your knowledge about about writing. Um, hopefully, this conversation will spark some people to to tell their stories either in a written format or maybe jump on a on a podcast and tell their stories because there's power in in stories, right? The different perspectives that people have. You know, I think it's just valuably to be told. Yes, hundred percent. Yeah, whether you write it or speak it, like get your story out there. Yeah, yeah. Well, thank you once again for being on today. Thanks for having me, Dre. Yeah, you're welcome. Thanks again for listening. Don't forget to rate and review the show wherever you access your podcast. If you know someone that would be great on the show, please get a hold of our host, Jerry Dean Lund, through the Instagram handles at Jerry Fire and Fuel or at Enduring the Badge Podcast. Also, by visiting the show's website, EnduringTheBadgePodcast.com for additional methods of contact and up-to-date information regarding the show. Remember, the views and opinions expressed during the show solely represent those of our host and the current episode's guests.